Hey everybody, MD here. Today we're going to go over all the different statistics and what they mean in Final Fantasy War of the Visions. With this last update, they added stacking statistics on gear, so I thought it would be a good time to refresh our understanding of all the statistics in the game and exactly what they do. Let's jump right in. The first statistic that you'll see on a unit is HP, or hit points. We've all played RPG games, so we should know what this is. There's not much to say here. This is the amount of health a unit has. The next two statistics are TP, technical points, and AP, attack points. And we're going to dive into these a bit. TP is required to perform certain abilities, primarily support abilities in battle. Units will always start each battle with full TP. AP, on the other hand, is accumulated during the battle. The amount of AP that a unit starts with is determined by their primary job. Any mage classes start with 75% of their max AP. So Medina, Ildira, Kilfi, etc. Red mages like Miranda start with 50% of their max AP. And all other classes start with 18% of their max AP. Now for the important stuff. When using abilities that require TP, your unit will build AP. The important thing to know here is the amount of AP you get is equal to half the TP used for the ability. So abilities like Stern's Hazard Form or Orlando's Crest of the Black Lion don't generate a ton of AP. This is why a lot of people favor the Samurai sub-job on Orlando because the illusion ability requires more TP, which lets Orlando generate more AP faster. With this in mind, it's always a good idea to consider the TMR gear that you give to a unit as well. Some Trust Master reward abilities require a ton of TP, which is actually a good thing, because you can generate more AP faster. For example, Mashiri's Knight's Blessing, Ayaka's Purify, and Rob's Keen Blade all require 42 TP, so they will generate a ton of AP for the unit using them. Next up are Attack and Magic. Like HP, these are fairly straightforward. Attack makes physical attack stronger, and magic makes magical attack stronger. You can check if an ability uses attack or magic by looking at the icon on the ability description. The sword icon is physical, and the staff icon is magical. Similarly, defense and spirit reduce the damage that your unit takes. Defense guards against physical attacks, and spirit guards against magic attacks. Worth noting, both of these statistics are percentage-based out of 100. For example, if a unit has 20 defense, they will take 20% less damage from physical attacks. Similarly, when you see defense penetration or spirit penetration, it just means the attack is ignoring that amount of defense or spirit on the target. However, it doesn't do extra damage to low defense units. It just ignores any defense or spirit that's already there. Moving on, agility is arguably one of the most important statistics in the game. It's a bit more complicated than previous statistics, but essentially, agility is speed. It determines how fast a unit takes turns. Basically, the game flow operates in clock ticks and it adds a unit's agility on each clock tick. When a unit gets to 100 CT, or count time, they take a turn. So basically, higher agility equals quicker turns. And not a lot of people know this, but agility also increases evasion on a unit by 1% for every 2 agility. Dexterity increases a unit's accuracy by 1% for every 3 dexterity. Dexterity also increases a unit's critical hit rate. Now, the formula for critical hit rate is a little more complicated, but basically higher dexterity means more critical hits. Next up are two of the game's more confusing statistics, bravery and faith. Bravery has a couple of different components to it. First. Bravery increases or decreases the amount of physical damage a unit deals in battle. Higher bravery equals more physical damage. At 50 bravery, an attack does base damage. 
Each point above 50 increases damage by 1%, and each point below 50 reduces damage by 1%. Every time a unit is KO'd, their bravery goes down. If your bravery goes low enough, you actually turn into a chicken. Bravery also increases the activation rate of physical reaction and counter abilities. So if you've ever wondered why it never seems like your counter abilities work or your unit isn't doing as much damage as you think it should, you might want to check that unit's bravery. To increase bravery, you can use the guild barracks. But to go above 70, you have to use abilities in battle that increase bravery. The most common one being the meditate ability for samurai. There's no reason why you shouldn't have high bravery on every one of your units. On the other hand, with Faith, you may want it high on some units and low on others. Faith increases the damage or healing that is done when using magic. Conversely, Faith also increases the damage or healing that is received by a unit. Kind of confusing, but I think it was a convenient way for programmers to make spellcasters more squishy while also making them more powerful. Most notably, however, Faith helps determine the success rate for inflicting status effects, both positive and negative. While some specific abilities will have a slightly different looking formula, the default formula for inflicting a status effect is your faith plus the target's faith divided by four. So for example, if both units have 50 faith, you have a 25% chance to inflict a status effect. This is why every unit is different in whether you want high faith or low faith. For example, Frederica's abilities Blackout, Leg Shot, and Arm Shot inflect status effects. If you want these status effects to land more reliably, you could have very high faith, but the trade-off is that she will take more damage from magic and be more susceptible to status effects herself. In general, you'll want all mages to have maximum faith to increase their damage, but you'll have to evaluate the unit, your build, what sub jobs you're using, and the role in your team to decide whether or not you want high or low faith. To increase or decrease faith, you can use the guild barracks. To go higher than 70 faith on any unit, you'll want to spam Fina's cheer ability. Next up are move, jump, and range. These ones are easy. Move determines how many squares a unit can move horizontally in battle. Jump determines how many squares a unit can move vertically in battle. Range determines how many squares a unit can attack from using their basic attack in battle. The next statistic is luck. Luck increases a few things. Accuracy, evade, and critical evasion. Essentially, a unit gains 2% accuracy and evade for every five luck. And just like dexterity, the formula for critical evasion is a bit more complicated, but higher luck means you take less critical hits. This is why Engelbert is such a great tank unit comparatively, because he has a very high luck stat, resulting in high critical evasion. Now let's take a closer look at the statistics that equipment can enhance. The first thing you'll notice is a great deal of overlap in the statistical categories between a unit and a piece of equipment. These categories are HP, TP, AP, Attack, Magic, Defense, Spirit, Agility, and Dexterity. We've already gone over how all of these function, so let's get to the statistics that haven't been covered yet. The first two statistical categories of note are Accuracy and evade. Each point of accuracy increases the chance an attack or ability hits by 1%, and each point of evade decreases it by 1%. So the formula here is 100 minus evade plus accuracy. Keep in mind that a unit's dexterity and luck statistics will enhance their overall accuracy, and luck and agility will enhance evasion. Similarly, crit and crit evade are pretty straightforward. Crit is the percent chance that a unit will land a critical hit. Crit evade simply negates crit. Last but not least, it's important to note that the statistical gains from equipment now stack, but with diminishing returns. Only the highest bonus gives you full statistics. 
and the second bonus will be between 20 and 50% depending on the stat, and the third bonus is between 10 and 30%. In general, you'll still be focusing on your highest bonus when equipping gear, but you can add a few extra points to important stats like evade or agility now through equipment stacking. If you liked this video, please show your love and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.